Ready Z80 finally got out of his shed and headed down to the 40th anniversary of the Tech One computer. And boy was he in for a treat. There was a large collection of Z80 machines. There was an Amstrad CPC 464, a ZX Spectrum, Osborne 1, TRS-80 and an MSX. But what he was really here for was seeing the largest collection of talking electronic computers probably in the world. This was Ken Stone's personal collection. This is the first ever working prototype of a tech computer. As you can see here it still has the original 8212 exotic output latches. Next to it is the third ever blue prototype. And this was the original Tech One that was on the front of the Talking Electronics magazine. There was also the original Tech One that was on issue 11 of the Talking Electronics magazine. Here is a Tech One A prototype with the upgraded segment latch using a 74LS273. A very dusty Tech 1B turned up. I have no idea if it was still working. It has an original 8x8 matrix attached plus a crystal oscillator. And the only ever Tech 1E was on display. As you can see it was jam-packed with functionality, probably over-engineered, but this was the first time I've ever seen one of these in real life. The original Mocha Professor 1 was in very bad shape but this was the computer that they used to program the first monitor for the Tech One. And would you believe it, it actually fired up. I met John Hardy and Ken Stone, the original designers of the Tech. John actually gave a talk on the history of the Tech. But we're really here for the latest talking electronics computer, the Tech One G. So let's now have a closer look at the Tech One G. So here we have it, the latest Telkin Electronics Z80 computer, the Tech one g And as you can see, there's a lot more componentry than the previous versions of the Tech. It basically includes all the add-ons that we really wanted to have on a Talkin Electronics computer. So starting over at the keyboard here, you have the ability to put in low-profile Gatoron keys, which are nice to touch. Or you can have the usual tactile keys in there instead. You have a direct connection to an FTDI to USB serial connection here. There's a Z80 bus expansion port, onboard crystal oscillator. There is still the ability to have a slow speed and a fast speed using the crystal oscillator so that existing programs on the original monitor can still be run. Again, you can switch between high and low ROM on this EEPROM here. And also there's jumpers here to set it so you can actually fit in an original 2K or 4K EEPROM. This EEPROM is actually a 32K EEPROM but only 16Ks can be used at once. Over here we have extra circuitry for a couple special features. One of those features is protect mode. If protect mode is on, there are certain address ranges that are protected while executing code. And this will help if you make a mistake and accidentally wipe your code, the code's protected. You have a USB or a barrel jack DC port for power input, a power switch, a standard LCD screen here, which is part of the Tech one g This is a 20x4 LCD screen. You have a joystick port. You also have a keyboard socket here for the matrix keyboard, which I'll show later, and the seven segments, data and address, and an extra bar graph here. There's a special system latch, which gives you an indication which mode the computer is running at. So let's fire this up and give it a demo. So something that I've been busy on is writing the new monitor for the Tech 1G. It's called Mon3. Now a monitor is a program that basically allows the user to interact with the hardware. You know, turn on the segments, handle the key presses. So let's fire this up and let's have a look at the new monitor. So on initial turn on, it will give you a hard reset, which is indicated by a sound, which you just heard, and the menu will appear. So on the LCD screen, we have a menu, which gives you the ability to choose various options. It's easy to navigate, just use the plus or minus keys. Press go to select the menu item and press address to go to data entry mode. So I like programming, let's go to data entry mode, pressing address. The LCD has changed now, we've got the 
current address, which is at 4000, and the contents of the address, which is 00, here. On the LCD screen, you have the current address, plus the next 10 bytes, and the previous 5 bytes. But also, you have a real-time conversion of the machine code, or the opcode, to assembly, Z80 assembly. So if I type in, let's say, 3E, which is load the register A, it comes with load register A with 00, zero because there's 00, zero next. If I do, let's say, 56, load the register A with 56. So this is a good indication of knowing, making sure what you're typing out is correct. So now I want to do a demo program, which just illustrates some of the features that mon the monitor has. Now this is one of the simplest programs that can, you can write on the tech, which is to turn on one of these segments and to turn on one of the LED lights. So to turn on a segment, I need to turn, I would like to turn this one on, which is number one. So if I do load register A with 01, and then I output it to the port, the segment port, or the digit port, D3, and the port is 01. Perfect. Now I need to light up one of the segments. I'll just choose the middle one, which is 04. So 3E, load the register A with 04, and then D3, 02, which is the LED port. And I want to look at it for a while, so I want it, the tech to just halt or wait for a key press, and that's done by a restart command, which is CF, restart 08. And then once I press a key, I return back to the monitor, just do a return. So let's see if I've keyed that in properly. I do home to reset it back to 4000. And I have a special key here called the function key. By holding the function key down and another key, it'll give you some special functionalities. So function D will give you the disassembler output. And I can see here what I've typed in, load register A01, out 01, 04, and out 02. And I can use the plus key to scroll down, restart A, return, perfect, home, reset, go. And the segment's lit up. But we also got this LED lit up here. This means it's in protect mode. And what protect mode does is that any code between 4000 and 7FFF is protected, is, is read only. So if I do make a mistake in this code and overwrite my own code, I won't lose it. Okay, pretty boring program. What I want to do now is create a program that cycles through all the LED segments one at a time. I know there's a combination of 256 different elements or combinations. For me to do that, I need a counter, and I'm going to use the register B. So I do home, I go back to the data entry mode, so I can see the bytes. I want to get down to the part where I hard code the register A with 4, and I want to now load B with 0. So B is 06, register B, and 00. zero. Now I need to do a, a load B to A, but I've already typed in some code here. So if I go to the line that I want to insert a byte at, I just now hit the function plus key, and that will insert one byte, a no op, in that location. But also it does a smart insert where if there's any two byte addressing that is affected by the shift, that will be adjusted as well. So load A to B is 7, 8. So load B to A, and then I output that to the port, which is port 2, great. Now here I need to increment B, so that's by doing 04. And then I'll just jump back, so C3, to uh, the location where I do the load AB, which is 4006, which is the 78 here. 4006. So C3, 06, 40. Okay, go home, press run. Yeah, uh, doesn't look like it's working properly. I've got all the segments lit up. I don't want that. There must be something going on. But no worries, we can insert a breakpoint. Reset that. I want to get to the increment B. So just to make sure it's working, one address after, I'll insert a byte. And I can call a breakpoint routine, which is the restart 30, which is F7. And when the code passes F7, it will halt the code and show me the registers. Let's have a go at that. Reset and go. All right, so we have breakpoints and we can see most of the registers, this program counter and the stack pointer 
and the flags. So I'm looking at the register B, which is 01 and A. Are they working? Are they updating? So if I hit go, it will step. It will continue the execution of the code, which will break again because it's looping. BC is 02, AF is 01. That looks like it's actually working properly. They're incrementing. Ah, the problem here is that the code's going too fast. I need to slow it down. So how do I do that? I need to put a timer delay in. So press address to escape breakpointing and go back to the data entry view. Now if I get down to the increment B and then where the breakpoint is, I need to do a time delay. But So I'm not really sure how to do a time delay, but don't worry. The monitor actually has an API access point where a lot of the routines that uh, run on the monitor can be used by your own programs. And to access the API, you, you do a restart 1.0, load the register C with the routine number, and you can also add in other variables if needed. So let's do that. Where the breakpoint is, I'll load the register C, O, E, with 2.1, which is the time delay routine. And now it requires another input, which is the HL register, the delay. So that's 2-1, and I'll load in 0, 0, 3, 0. Now I'll call the restart routine, which is D7, restart 10, and then I'll loop back, so C3, 0, 6, 4, 0. Do home. I'll just go to disassembler view again. Just check, load register A with 1, output 1, good. B with 0, load B with A, increment B. Now I'll load C with... 2-1, which is the time delay routine. 3 zero, zero hex is the delay. Reset 10, jump, perfect, home, and press go, and hopefully this will work. And there you have it. You can see the digits here incrementing, or going through all the cycles of all the different combinations of LEDs lighting up on the segments. So that's how you can easily type in code on the tech, debug it, and access the monitor's own routines through the API call. Great, but there's more. What about the menu? Let's have a look at the menu now. I'm in data entry mode now. How do I get back to the menu? You just do function zero, and you've got the menu. We have smart block copy. So hitting smart block copy will give you a parameter input, and you can move code from one location to another location. So the code I've got in there is at 4000. I want to move, the end address is 4012. I want to move it to, let's say, 2000. Now with a smart copy, it will also update all the two byte address references. So hit go. Okay, it's gone back to data entry mode. Let's go to address 2000. And there you go, you got the code there. But let's have a look at that jump routine right at the end or the jump call. Load HL3000. Okay, and it's actually going back, jump to 2006, so it's actually updated the jump. So if I go back to 2000 and hit go, and there you go, the program's working. That's smart block copy. Exit that, go back to the menu. So there's a, an option here to export to Z80 assembly. I hit go, from and to address. And if I connect my computer to the FTDI to USB interface to a serial terminal, I can then export the assembly to my computer. I hit go. And you can see on the screen here, you've got the code I've written back in assembly, plus also the opcodes that are associated with what I've typed. Perfect. Go back to the menu. We've also got export raw data. So this will export the bytes only in a binary format. We've got export hex dump. It will give you a text formatted traditional hex dump of the code. So if I do go and I'll do the address of C100, which is the operating system or the monitor code, C1FF, hit clear and hit go. And you can see on the assembly output here on the serial terminal, I've got uh, the 256 bytes worth of data in text format. What else can we do in the menu? We can also import a binary file. Another routine on here is a music routine. It can play simple tunes. I've got a binary file which has some tune data. Let's load that up. So I do import binary file. It will ask for where do you want it to import it to. 
I'll say 2000 to 20B6 because I know that's, whoops, 2000, down arrow, 20B6 because I know that's how long the binary file is. Press go and now it's waiting for the binary file to load. If I go to my terminal and I've got this tune to Carter, double click on that. The tech comes back to life, the code's loaded. If I go to address 2000 and, and uh, get out of data entry mode, I can see some code here, OA, OF, 1012. That's the code for the music routine. Go to the menu, go down to the menu, there's a music routine option. And hit go, we'll ask you where the start address is. It retains the last start address, perfect, and hit go. And there you go, there's uh, Takata. What else can the monitor do? Well, you've got Tiny Basic here. So if I clear my terminal and hit go. And now the tech is running Tiny Basic, but not only the standard Tiny Basic, it has some added functionalities to interact back to the tech, you know, to, to uh, output to various ports on the tech. So if I cut and paste a code into the serial terminal, like so, so there's the routine, I can do a list. All this is doing is loading an array of data, which is segment data, and I'm outputting to port one, which is the turning on the segment, and I'm iterating through the data and outputting it to port two with a small delay. So I've hit run. If you look on the tech now, I'm incrementing, you know, I'm displaying one or zero to nine and finish. So there's other examples I've got with Tiny Basic, but it's pretty much the standard Tiny Basic. And you can do Control D to exit. And a couple more options here. You have got settings and you have got the credits. So the designer, myself, and the people who've helped, and the original designers, John Hardy and Ken Stone. So one thing I haven't shown yet are these connectors here. This is These connectors are called the, the Tech Deck. And it, allows you to expand the tech upwards by adding on layers of add-on boards. For instance, if you want to create a video card. And the first add-on that's been released is this card here. This is the graphical LCD adapter and it will sit on top of the tech like so. And I have one here with the uh, G graphical LCD screen attached to the top of the board and the feeders or the headers going downwards into the, the tech. So I'll just pop that on now and let's give this card a go. Okay, the graphical LCD board is now on the tech deck. I turn the tech on. And again, to interface with the graphical LCD is another API. All you do, all you gotta do is give it the routine number in the register array, some parameters and called restart18. So I've got some quick little demo programs that I've created. How do I load them up? Well, I can also use the Intel hex load option on the menu here. This will receive an Intel hex load format. So let's do that, press go. Now the tech will wait for, my, for the file to be sent. And when sending the data, it will also give you a bit of feedback here of uh, that data is being sent through this segment here. And I can see, data has been sent, it displays pass here, which means it worked, if it displays fail, it fails, there's something obviously wrong. So I can press address to get out of that, go to data entry mode, and I've got the code loaded at 4090 for the first demo, press go, and here we've got, uh, you know, I call this blowing bubbles, some random circles blowing up in different locations and at different radiuses. And that was only done with a few lines of code interacting with the API, the graphical API on the monitor. Okay, and one last program to demonstrate. That's address four zero, address mode four zero C two. Hit go. And we've just got some random lines here. There's a random number generator on the API that I'm using. Press any key to restart the uh, 
the program, just some random lines going from X and Y. And yeah, it looks pretty cool. And obviously, if you've watched my other videos, there are some other graphical routines I've written, like the 3D rotations and the maze generating program. They all can be loaded onto this computer and uh, run through the graphical LCD screen. By connecting a matrix keyboard to the matrix keyboard adapter, this keyboard I've demonstrated before in a previous video, you can get full functionality of the hex pad via this keyboard. You can also wire up the reset button can be wired up, plus if you've got one, caps lock light as well. And by using the matrix scan API routine, you can get full access to all the keys on the keyboard. And finally, the good news about the Tech 1G is it's fully open source. The software, the monitor, and also the PC board. You can now download the Gerber file, go to any PCV manufacturer, and print your own boards. No more being restricted by one person owning the board. You can currently buy this board off eBay, and I've got links on the video below regarding that. I've also produced a Tech 3 monitor guide that goes through all the ins and outs of the monitor, uh, the API routine, some example programs. It's got everything there you need to know about the monitor. So that's it. No need to wait now for the latest Z80 computer, the Talking Electronics single board computer. If you want to learn about Z80 programming, electronics, this is a great computer to build yourself and show it off to your friends and family. And on that note, I'll see you next time.